In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Again, I'm happy to start this conference with the theme, Come over and help us. I think all of you remember this verse. It came in the book of Acts, chapter 16, when St. Paul was um, having some hard time to know the exact plan of God. He was asking God to guide him where to go. He was stuck in Asia and all doors were closed. And while praying, he could see a man from Macedonia. Macedonia is a city in Greece, in Europe, and he was in Asia. And this man was telling him, come over and help us. And he considered this a call from God and this started the whole missionary service in Europe. The first title I would tell you about, come over and help us God. We pray to God, come over and help us. And you know, this one is very much related to the Christmas. This theme, this um, prayer is related to the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ being incarnate. The God to be incarnated, God to came to our land, it's kind of coming over to save us or to help us. I'll go through some of the verses to check the idea from the Old Testament. First of all, in the book of Psalms, the number 18, he bowed the heavens, look to this, he bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. As if he is pushing heaven to come near to earth. He is pushing heaven to touch earth. Another verse in the Psalm number 144 Bow down your, your heavens, O Lord, we are praying. Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. It's like come over. It's the same meaning. Eh? Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. These all were like prophecies of the incarnation. David and the writers of the Psalms were prophesying the meaning of God incarnate. Another prophecy comes in Isaiah 64, or oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. Again, come down, rend the heavens, so he comes quickly to save us. First of all, I want to tell you, as a as a preacher, you should understand the verbs to simplify the truth of incarnation. The most important message we proclaim to any people anywhere that God came to us. God is, a, is real. And this coming over is presented in the Bible with many verbs, many kinds of action. First of all, the expression of incarnation was like he went in, brought into. Look to the readings of the Mass of the Christmas, Hebrews chapter 1. When he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. So look to this, brings into the world. Or in another translation, he went in. There is a big difference between the verb uh, to be born and the verb to come or went. Uh, because the meaning of coming or going means that he was there. He was eternal. He was not, he was existed. But just he came into our land. But the meaning of being born Sometimes we may, may understand as if he just started. In our theological understanding, we, know, we understand that Jesus was there. Our Lord Christ 
was in his divine nature was born from God the Father be, be, before ages but he was born from Saint Mary in the history on uh, an exact time another verse from the book of Acts therefore if of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out Saint Peter Saint Peter told us the truth in a very simple way God incarnated he went in and then he went out in means the incarnation out means the ascension to heaven but this coming in and out means that he was there and he will stay there forever God is there always but he went in and out in for our salvation another verb or an expression of incarnation is descending therefore he says when he ascended on high this is simple he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men that was part of the prophecy now saint paul is explaining he ascended what does it mean but that he also first descended so saint paul is saying because the prophecy said about the Lord Christ that he ascended means originally that he descended first uh, into the lower parts of the earth so you know after being incarnate he lived on earth and also after the cross he went into hell to save our forefathers from the Old Testament he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things so it's kind of a study what is the meaning of God incarnate you are not necessarily going to say all this to the people and then you as a preacher as a servant you should understand the meanings of the incarnation it's not as simple as there is some good man born on earth 2000 years ago it's more serious than this he is God who came for our salvation another verse from the psalm 104 they went up over the mountain they went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them Another meaning of incarnation is manifested. التعبير بتاع ظهر أو أظهر is very common in the Bible to explain the meaning of the birth of our Lord. So we said he went in, he descended. Now we are saying that he was manifested. These all some expressions of the birth of our Lord Christ. St. Paul saying, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. This is another expression of incarnation. Justified in the spirit, seen by angels. You know, he was not seen by angels before incarnation. The angels could not stare at or look at God. His divine nature couldn't be seen even by angels. But with the incarnation, our Lord Christ walking on earth, living among us, even the angels can see him now. Preached among the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up in glory. So this is another expression, manifested. Also, St. John said, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. So, he was born, but he is telling us he was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. But this is another meaning of incarnation. God came to us, God descended to us, God was manifested to us. God was born for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil another verb to express incarnation the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and upon those who sat 
in the region and shadow of this light has downed. This kind of light has downed because we are living in darkness and the true light, who is the Lord himself, light was, has downed. Also was written in the book of Malachi, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise. It's easier to say arise. The son of righteousness, Sham Silber, shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stale fed calves. Another verb in the book of Galatians, when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son born of a woman, born under the law. So here is the verb born, and this is common, but you know, God sent his son. This is another expression of incarnation. And it was said by the Lord himself in the Gospel of St. John, God did not send his son into the world, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this is another expression, sending the son. God the Father is sending the son. Another verb is come, that simply which we expressed before, Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous. So he came. He simply came to us. You can say that he was born. And also you can easily say that he came to us. God came to our land. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So he just came for the sinners. The same verb comes in the words of Isaiah. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand. This is a prophecy. You know, Isaiah was 800 years before Christ. So he's telling God is coming with strong hand and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. He came for salvation. He came for redemption. He came to die on the cross for our salvation. The same in the words of the Lord himself, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So he expressed his birth by the coming, his coming to um, give in real life, new life, eternal life. Again, in the letter of St. John, for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is another meaning, coming in the flesh. This is the exact meaning of incarnation. Who do not accept this truth is the deceiver and antichrist. Lastly, we will end with the commonest word expressing the act of his birth, which is born. Christ is born, as written in Luke, there is born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And you know, um, focus on born to you, or born for you, and also it was written in Isaiah, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And if you look carefully to this verse, you can see he is our son, but he will be called the Almighty and Everlasting Father. How could it be he is our son as human beings and be called father and everlasting father, prince of peace? Do you remember the verbs given to express the meaning of incarnation? Like, huh? go, born, okay, coming, to be sent, manifested, arise, went in, 
Uh, the light had down, descended, descended. Okay. I want to tell you this. Most of the verbs focus on his eternal existence. As you could see, that most of these verbs focus on his eternal existence. So we Christians believe that Christ is not only a man, but he is the real God. He is the eternal God manifested now being a man for our salvation but he's still the only God you understand and this is the message we are proclaiming everywhere when we pray to God come over and help us over let's imagine that all the prophets all men of the Old Testament were praying continuously come over and help us so he came he came to help us over what to save us from what this is very important in our theology what is the meaning of salvation to be saved of what to be helped of what first of all death his main purpose is to kill death death was the was and still is the biggest and the most serious enemy for human being and God came for this problem Saint Paul said and by the way Athanasius the great was always mentioning this verse the coming one to explain the philosophy of incarnation in as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood because we all have taken the same flesh and blood same human nature he himself likewise shared in the same he shared us our flesh and blood that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil he shared us our flesh and blood in order to die for us so with the power of his death he conquered the power of death uh, overcoming all, all of us who had the power of death that is the devil because God cannot die in his divine nature he is not able to die so he have he had to have our human nature which is able to die this is the exact meaning of incarnation also he came to help us against or over Satan, devil. In the first letter of John, he who sinned is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is another ex meaning of the purpose of incarnation. We express the verbs of incarnation. Now we are focusing on the purpose of incarnation why God came to our land came we put it in many verbs but now we are discussing the why he came for the problem of death he came to die in order to give us his power of redirection to conquer this the second meaning or another meaning he came to destroy the works of the devil the devil corrupted the whole human nature. Everyone living on earth is living a sinful life, living in corruption. He came over to help us over sin because we are always having a problem with sin. We are fighting sin and we cannot easily overcome sin. But God came in our land, in our flesh, to destroy the power of sin and also destroy the power of devil and death as written surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted we are grieved because of being living in sin so he took this over his shoulder again that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin so another point 
He came over and helped us over trials. We are suffering. We people living on earth are living most of the time in hard time. We are living in tribulation, in trials, in, in fights, in problems, in diseases. So he came to us, he himself has suffered. Being tempted, he's able to aid those who are tempted. So another reason why Christ came, he came to share us, our sorrows, our suffering. He came to uh, taste the same cup of bitterness that we always tasting. So we can simply summarize the blessing of incarnation in four main points because this is a very common question you should understand the answer and tell this answer to any non-believer why you are saying God came why he should come why you are telling this story so God was born God came to us God descended to us his his light arised for us. Why? First of all, to give us the adoption. To make us his sons and daughters. This is the outcome of his incarnation. As you all know, one of the saints said once that the Son of God became the Son of Man. So sons of men will be sons of God. You understand? The only Son of God, the only Son of God, became Son of Man. So, sons of men will be upgraded to be sons of God. So, this is the first uh, blessing we got out of His incarnation. And that's in another expression or another meaning, we call it the new nature. That we were created on his image and this image was corrupted by our free will by the sin now he is restoring the new nature he is bringing again the good picture of man he made it from the start so this is the purpose of our incarnation and consequently we also gain another great gift from this uh, incarnation which is the Holy Spirit. As Anastasius said once, he took what is ours and gave us what is his. He took what is ours. What is ours? Um, flesh, human nature. This is very special to us. And also death, sinful life, corruption. This all ours. But what is related to him? Very special, his Holy Spirit. So he took, us, took our flesh and gave back his Holy Spirit. So this is the outcome of incarnation. He came to us in order to put his Holy Spirit inside our hearts. That's why we believers are the temples of the Holy Spirit. We believe after baptism and chrismation. Nowadays we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. The third point if you put these two points together, we will come to the meaning of salvation. Rescue, freedom. We are saved from the power of sin, the devil power, the death, the outcome of sin. So this is the meaning of salvation. He came to save us, simply. So this is the simplest truth. He came to save us. Saving us means to give us the new life, to restore the original pure nature, the Christ image, to give us the adoption or being born of God. So this all means that he came to save us. And the last point we will mention that with incarnation, now we are ready to go to his kingdom of heaven. We are not allowed to catch the kingdom of heaven. We are not ready to get into heaven without this new life, this Holy Spirit. So he came 
to our land to take us to his land. That's simple. He came from heaven to earth to take those living on earth to his heaven. So this is the meaning of incarnation or the purpose of, of incarnation. Again, as Anasius said, he took what's ours and gave us what's his. Uh, so when we are speaking about come over and save us, or come over and help us, and you know this, this is the theme of our missionary service that many people are saying, are crying out for us, please come over and help us. First of all, we have to remind ourselves that we are saying the same to God. Come over and help us. And this is the continuous prayer. He already came to save us, but he is always in a, in a state of coming. He is always coming. He came from St. Mary for salvation, but he is ready to come to save us with praying. And this will be another um, lecture. Um, to summarize, I will put you the few good words of St. Paul when he said in Philippians chapter 2, But God made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as a man. Look to this, coming in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. He made himself of no reputation. He meant that Christ was a real God, but he humbled himself to take the human nature and appeared as a man. So, if you look at our Lord Christ, he was the master, but he became a slave. He was the only and real God. He became a human being. He was the sinless one, the only being without sin, but he carried all sins of the human nature. He was full of dignity, but you know, he degraded himself. He was full of glory, but he accepted all kinds of humiliation just for our salvation. I'm saying so because this is our story now. If you are going to come over to help any people, you should think this way. If you are a master, you are ready to be a slave. If you are full of glory, you are ready to accept humiliation for the goal of salvation, as exactly done by our Master God. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. So he is telling God the Father, as you sent me, I'm sending them. So we are carrying the same message, the same mission, the same call of descending. Um, so how much would it cost you to cross over and reach others. Glory to God. Amen.